Hi and welcome to my podcast The Fertility Motherhood and Wellness Show Two Stories with Dr Rajiv Through this podcast I will be dealing with issues related to fertility safe motherhood practices as well as women's health The topic of our discussion today is breastfeeding is it a choice or a responsibility The World Health Organization also recommends that mothers initiate breastfeeding within 1 hour of birth and thereafter provide exclusive breastfeeding up to 6 months of age with continued breastfeeding along with appropriate complementary foods up to 2 years of age or beyond however the truth is globally only 40% of infants under the age of 6 months are exclusively breastfed if breastfeeding is indeed so good then why are the figures so low what is so great about the breast milk why the high let me share some interesting facts about breast milk and breastfeeding with you babies who are breastfed are less likely to be obese or overweight later in life they are less likely to have type 2 diabetes and perform better in intelligence tests breastfeeding burns about 500 to 600 calories a day this is equivalent to 1 hour of high intensity training that means some moms might end up losing weight without any additional exercise mothers who breastfeed have a lower risk of developing breast cancer ovarian cancer heart disease stroke type 2 diabetes and postpartum depression and the longer a woman breastfeeds in her lifetime the more protection she receives the hormones released when you breastfeed help your uterus shrink back to its pre-pregnancy size. Breast milk has been used to treat burns, eye infections, diaper rash and to reduce infection and promote healing. Breast milk is a known superfood. In certain countries, bodybuilders have been known to consume it for more benefit. On a lighter note, a New York City restaurant sells cheese made out of breast milk. The chef says the flavor depends on what the mother eats. Breastfeeding is amazing in so many different ways. From the intense bond it can help you form with your baby in the first hours of birth to the benefits it has on your baby's health even into adulthood. There is a reason breast milk is called liquid gold. To discuss more on the subject, I have here Mrs. Ankita Malik, a woman who wears many hats. She is a mother of two and a half year old toddler. She handles the social media for Quest Mall. She has been into advertising and marketing for the last nine years. She has even had a stint as a guest lecturer at the Mahadevi Birla Girls High School, teaching the girls content and creative writing. And of course, what she is here for today, she is a certified lactation educator, having had her training from Kappa, a US-based childbirth and lactation training institution. We have been working together for the past almost what two years now, wherein she has been helping all my patients with their lactation difficulties. Thank you, Ankita, for coming onto the show. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. But I think you are the one who can boast of donning several hats to perfection, from being one of the top doctors we have to starting an online fertility academy, and now, of course, the wonderful initiative in the form of this podcast. I've learned everything under your guidance and it's truly an honor for me to be a part of this. So, let's start the the Q&A, right? So, my first question to you Ankita is how does a mother prepare herself for breastfeeding and say adequate milk supply during pregnancy? Uh the mother needs to have a candid discussion with a gynecologist and her lactation specialist ideally in the third trimester of pregnancy itself. She should air out all her doubts and issues. The lactation consultant will conduct a thorough breast examination to rule out any potential problems such as flat or inverted nipples. In such cases, the mother can be asked to use breast shells and invest in nipple pullers. It's always better to be mentally prepared for the journey ahead as it makes things a lot easier and even enjoyable. The next very critical point I'd like to make is the use of correct size bras. This can get a little cumbersome and expensive as moms keep changing sizes. But even so it's extremely important as it helps support the breasts prevents back pain and can even reduce the occurrence of stretch marks. 
Mothers should be aware of the fact that the sooner they start breastfeeding the baby post delivery, the smoother the entire journey of lactation promises to be. It doesn't matter whether the mother has had a natural birth or a C-section, she should ideally start breastfeeding in the delivery room or OT itself. And it's always better to plan ahead with the concerned doctors. Fantastic. I think it couldn't have been more comprehensive than that. You know, one myth, uh, if at all it is a myth, you'll be the one to clear that. Do smaller breasts mean lesser milk? Yes, this is definitely one of the biggest myths I've ever come across. I have met several women with small breasts who are able to produce ample milk for their babies and even have some left over to store. On the other hand, women with big breasts are sometimes unable to satiate the hunger of their babies. Breast size is completely irrelevant when it comes to breastfeeding. It is the triggering of hormones within the mother's body which determines how much milk is produced. These hormones are triggered by childbirth and by nipple stimulation. In other words, milk supply is dependent on the amount the mother nurses the baby. Therefore, the more the mother feeds, the more milk she produces. Of course, there are exceptional cases of mothers having insufficient glandular tissues and other medical conditions, but these are extremely rare cases and again can be dealt with by doctors and lactation consultants. Fantastic. Thank you so much. You know, one other problem that I have is uh, I had a call the other day wherein this lady called saying that her breast milk is not white. Uh, they could be brown or you know other colors and so on and so forth. And that raises such a huge concern because we have this uh, thing in our head that uh, breast milk should always be white. Right. How true is that? That is actually not true because the funny thing about breast milk that it never really has the same color or consistency or composition. It keeps changing. Like immediately post birth, mothers produce colostrum, which is a thick, clear, yellowish liquid. It gradually turns into transitional milk and it takes on a more whitish appearance. And finally, mature milk. Then we have foam milk, which is more watery, and hind milk, which is thicker and whiter. That apart, the color of breast milk keeps changing depending on the mother's diet. Sometimes it turns greenish, sometimes bluish, sometimes even orange. If the mother is experiencing cracked or bleeding nipples, some blood may get mixed up in the breast milk and give it a pinkish or brownish color. It's almost always completely safe to continue nursing the baby despite the changes in color. However, if there's a drastic change, it's always advisable to take a medical opinion. Really green, blue and orange, I'd never even heard of colors like that uh, happening with the breast milk. But uh, so the basic idea is that breast milk can be of any other color as well. Yes. It does not necessarily have to be white. Right. So when should mothers ideally start breastfeeding? Ideally, mothers should start breastfeeding the minute they give birth. I know that you encourage mothers to breastfeed at the table immediately post delivery, even after C-sections. That's I, That I think is a great practice because it really does give the mother a head start when it comes to latching and also makes my life a lot easier. Latching is instinctive and the sooner the baby is made to latch on, the smoother the entire journey is. In my experience, 75% of breastfeeding related problems are because of a poor latch. Babies are very alert one hour post birth and if at this time a latch is established, it really does influence the days to come. It also gives the mother a lot of confidence to feed and post that they should feed as much and as often as they can. And how often does one need to breastfeed? I think this is another thing which people keep coming up with questions as to you know whether it should be demand feeding and or whether you should wake up their babies and feed. So how often? So new moms often complain that they feel like cows constantly suckling their young ones. And as ridiculous as it may sound, it should be like that. One should feed as much and as often as she wants to and as much as the baby wants to nurse. Demand feeding is a common term used like you said, but it is often misinterpreted. By demand feeding, we don't mean that we need to wait for the baby to cry, but to feed the baby before it gets frustrated. You see, crying is a late sign of hunger and the experience can get very traumatic if we wait for the baby to get frustrated. It's very difficult to put a timeline on the feeding time as babies are individuals and different babies have different needs. So if a baby asks for milk every two hours, it's considered normal. And if it wants to be fed every 20 minutes, that too is considered normal. One should just not go beyond a two, two and a half hour window for a newborn. If the baby continues sleeping beyond this period, 
the mother should ideally wake the baby up for a feed as oversleeping is not always a positive sign but does this mean for the night as well or is it something that it should be only followed during the day so babies don't understand the difference between day and night okay so it should be followed 24/7 so moms can't sleep basically mm-hmm. after they've given birth fantastic and how long does the mother need to nurse the baby during each feed again this differs from baby to baby and even the same baby may not have a fixed time frame it can take anywhere from 5 to 45 minutes to fill a baby's tummy a mother should feed the baby till the baby is full many mothers that i've come across have been worried about their babies bringing up milk they are scared that they could be overfeeding their little ones babies are not like adults so mothers need not worry as they won't drink a drop beyond their requirement therefore it's impossible to overfeed a breastfeeding infant mothers can therefore freely feed in an uninhibited manner this is actually something which has been there in my head that um, how do you find out when to stop really so thank you for answering that that the babies won't really overfeed and they will uh, latch off if there is a term like that right. uh, once their stomach is full and is there any particular breastfeeding position that is correct i wouldn't like to say whether a particular position is correct or wrong whatever is comfortable for the mother and the baby is the correct position there are absolutely no hard and fast rules to be followed the only thing that the mother needs to remember is to support the baby's head and neck and also the mother should avoid bending down or straining her arms as we don't want any pains and aches breastfeeding is after all a long journey so the comfort of the baby and mother are of equal importance having said that we often teach mothers different positions but generally it's due to some issue either a latch issue or some problem or simply because the new mother is overwhelmed or in pain if she's confident enough to hold and feed the baby on her own i feel nothing like following the mother's instinct you know this is something again that i face having operated or delivered someone when i go back and see her the next day or the day after that most of them tend to have this neck kind of a pain because they've been stooping really? uh, and looking at their baby when trying to feed and without even realizing they tend to have a neck pain because they've been looking down and you know both you and I have been talking about sitting straight and and feeding the baby in 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 that particular position so i think this is again very important one more thing i would like you to reinforce uh, as a lactation consultant what are your views on this never ending debate on bottle feeding versus spoon feeding so if the mother plans to breastfeed her baby then it's best to avoid the bottle completely the only advantage of bottle feeding is the convenience for the mother there is absolutely no advantage for the baby bottle feeding in fact puts the baby at risk of contracting infections and diarrhea in case of even the slightest lax in sterilization it can even cause ear infections babies almost always develop a preference towards the bottle and the entire breastfeeding cycle is disturbed which ultimately results in low milk supply for the mother spoon feeding can be a little challenging initially but once you get the hang of it after a few sessions it's quite simple breast or spoon feeding results in better jaw and dental development as compared to bottle feeding as well so i think this fact needs to be reiterated again and again because mothers keep coming back and saying oh you know what my milk has reduced not realizing that somewhere that whole process of giving the bottle is the reason behind why their milk gets reduced because Absolutely. the baby starts to feed on the bottle and doesn't want to go back to the breast because obviously the breast right. uh, suckling is more difficult correct it's a vicious cycle okay can mothers who haven't given birth breastfeed their adopted or surrogate babies this is again something which you and i have dealt with in the past yes we have successfully dealt with many cases of surrogacy where the non birth mother was successfully able to breastfeed and this requires planning and a coordinated effort between the doctor lactation consultant and the mother milk supply can be induced through a combination of hormone therapy and stimulation without the mother giving birth to the baby milk may or may not of course be enough to fill the tummy of the little one but mothers who haven't been able to induce supply by the time the babies are born need not lose heart as there are also devices which are available to help provide the baby with supplemental feeds while being attached to the, to the breast 
so dual purpose of feeding the baby and nipple stimulation happens at the same time and there's somewhere i think gives a bit of a bonding as well between the mother and the baby of course uh, of course okay and again one question uh, which we keep getting asked is how do i know that my baby is getting enough milk so every baby has a different appetite and therefore the amount of milk that is it is consuming is generally not a factor one needs to see if the baby is gaining weight if he or she appears generally alert and settled and is passing urine a minimum of, of 6 to 8 times in 24 hours if the pee count is any lesser and the baby appears cranky or too sleepy and lethargic all the time the pediatrician should immediately be contacted as it is showing signs of dehydration Mothers get very happy if newborn sleep through the night but too much sleep is also not a good sign it is not normal for newborn babies to sleep through the night if they don't get up themselves they should be woken up for feeds after a maximum of a 3 hour gap wow okay again uh, you know having delivered a baby and with uh, pollution and you know viral and everything else so a nursing mother can fall ill Should a mother continue nursing even if she is unwell? Absolutely. During any ordinary illness, a mother must continue feeding her baby. The mother's body manufactures antibodies to fight these infections which get transmitted into the baby via breast milk. This actually gives additional immunity and health benefits to the young one. The mother must remind her doctor that she is breastfeeding so he can prescribe medicines accordingly. Of course in case of extreme and major illnesses where the infection enters the blood stream the mother may need to stop breastfeeding but this happens very rarely and in such cases the mother generally needs to be hospitalized nonetheless it's always good to keep your doctor and lactation consultant in the loop so that there are no questions or doubts perfect um one really last question to you why do mothers stop breastfeeding so early I think the primary cause of stopping breastfeeding early is uh, misinformation. Since breastfeeding consulting is relatively new in Kolkata, there are very few doctors like yourself who offer lactation counseling at the patient's bedside. So when mothers are faced with any challenge during this time, they don't know what to do and the immediate reflex is to introduce the bottle which starts the vicious cycle which we spoke about earlier. Another reason for mothers to stop breastfeeding early is the occurrence of latching issues. Latching issues are fairly common and establishing a correct latch forms the foundation of a healthy breastfeeding relationship and an incorrect latch is equally distressing. It can result in non-nutritive feeding sessions, plugged milk ducts, mastitis, cracked and bleeding nipples to name a few. You know breastfeeding is also uh, somewhat socially difficult. I mean not just at workplace but even at home some people have small homes and they may not be that kind of a privacy available so um, when we talk about mothers stopping breastfeeding early does unsupportive workplace and culture norms or a lack of family support also contribute definitely i'd uh, like to first talk about working mothers because working mothers have an exhaustible number of maternity leaves and can find it very stressful especially if they're keen to exclusively breastfeed their infant. It's not always possible to bring your baby to work or work from home. Even so, it is possible to breastfeed your baby with a little bit of planning and support. In such cases, she can carry a breast pump to work along with an ice case to store the express milk. The mother can then regularly pump and store the milk in the bag. When home, she can directly breastfeed her baby. and the express milk can be used the following day to feed the baby when the mother is at work the next point i'd like to make is of family uh, sometimes mothers get so pressurized by cultural norms and traditions and expectations that they are more stressed than happy about becoming mothers the immediate family especially the husband needs to step in and protect the mother from unnecessary comments and any kind of negativity motherhood itself is an overwhelming period especially for the new mother She is not just anxious about taking care of her baby but also she herself needs to heal and people around her especially her family needs to be understanding and compassionate. Wow, uh, I didn't realize we've actually been talking for more than 20 minutes now. Was so engrossed in all your answers. I think we seem to have covered a lot of ground. Um I think I think this information been passed on to the breastfeeding mothers or even mothers who are uh, going to deliver. 
would be absolutely uh, wonderful for them because they know now how to prepare who to get in touch with what things they should be doing in pregnancy what what is it that they should be looking out for and of course after delivery as well what are the do's and don'ts so thank you so much once again for coming on to the show and for giving us so much information in such a lucid manner thank you so much doctor it was an absolute delight for me to be a part of this wonderful session i'd like to congratulate you once again for your fantastic podcast and the invaluable work that you do especially during times like these So the last message would be breastfeeding is not a choice but a responsibility and this brings me to the end of yet another podcast episode i hope you enjoyed listening to it as much as i enjoyed making it if you get a chance to look up my website www.drrajivagarwal.co.in and the associated blog i also have a youtube channel in my name do email me on fertilitywithoutborders@gmail.com if you have any queries this podcast is available on apple and google podcast as well as spotify do subscribe and leave your comments and suggestions for any future topics on the apple podcast app that's the only way we can make this better looking forward to great interactions keep listening